Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. Cheers! <laughs> we are going live to teach you how to paint the classic leg lamp. This is so exciting. And just so you know, we have a beautiful leg lamp in our window too that has been handmade by my sweet hubby. It is quite extraordinary. It is a giant leg lamp that is just about as tall as I am. And so he works really hard on it. And he's also super stoked that it has a Kim Kardashian shoe. So <laughs> he's so proud of that. Um, but yeah, if you are in Guthrie, you need to come by and see it. It's definitely uh, something to come by and see. We're working really hard on our Christmas window display. So it's pretty cool, check it out. And uh, I'm sure we probably have some videos on it too. He's going to be um, releasing soon, I think, the making of the leg lamp. I don't know that he's done that yet or not, but anyway, it was really a lot of work to make that. So check that out. Hello, Rolinda. Hello, Denise. Let's see who else I can see out there. I don't know. Um, please note that if I do not see your name or your comments, I always go back afterwards and check everything out and say hi and leave lots of notes and answer any questions for you. So today is a busy day. I'm doing about um, eight paintings today. Wish me luck. Hi, Lance. <laughs> hi, Rolanda. Uh, so I'll get to you if I don't see it. Sometimes uh, I've noticed Facebook isn't showing that many. Um, and I have YouTube over here too. Hello, everybody out there. Hi. So I always get back with everybody. All right. So let's talk about our kit. So we have the whole kit with everything that you need on our website, tipsyartist.com. All the supplies are there. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'm trying to change it up. I have about five or six different Santa hats and they're all different um, types of sparkles and colors. And so I'll be changing it up a little bit. Next time you see me on today, I'll be in a different hat. It'll be fun. All right, so um, yeah, so check out our kits, tipsyartist.com, everything that you need. And then this is how it starts. So I'm gonna walk you through the process step by step. So every single one of our kits now come with line art traceables, and they are very effective for both two sizes. They work really well for either 11 by 14 or eight by 10. We sell uh, mostly just 11 by 14 on our website. So, but if you have eight by tens at home, they work great with that too. And we can just do the traceable uh, kit as well. So that's another option for you, or you can buy the whole kit if you need everything. And then when you place it on here, it's got the traceable, the transfer paper, and you wanna make sure that the dull gray side faces you. And then the shinier, darker side faces the canvas. And then we provide a color pencil so that you can line it all out. This is really helpful so that you can see where you've been. That's a really helpful thing. And then we also have the washi tape that comes with it too. And then it helps, that helps secure it at, up at the top. Now let's flip this. Ta-da, I worked ahead, it's like magic. <laughs> so we also have a permanent marker with your kit too. So I went ahead and did a hard line edge for this. This will definitely come in handy on this painting because I'm just gonna basically work in our background finish all over the entire painting and then all of this will bleed through and we really, really love that. That makes the process so much easier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this down because I worked ahead. You don't have to sit here and watch me do all that. And then with our materials here, you'll have everything that you need. The only thing you wanna make sure you go and get is a little cup of water, bucket of water. And then other than that, I know with the kit, I've got everything else that you need. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and start with our mama brush. By the way, I've got three brushes that come with the kit. So I've got mama brush, little buddy brush, and then little bit brush. All right, so to begin with, I'm going to be starting with some titanium white, and then also some cadmium yellow, and then a little touch of some primary yellow. All right, so I want to, I'm gonna grab a lot of white nearby. I've been painting all day, so I'm, I've got some already loaded up here. All right, 
a lot of surface area to cover here, so about four heaping dollops of that. that that's the titanium white. And then I have a little bit of extra of that cadmium yellow from earlier and the primary yellow, but I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze out a little bit more. So again, let's do a little bit more of this cadmium here off to the side. And then I'll give you another visual so you can see it. But I wanna make sure I have a lot to start with. So, to begin with, about four heaping dollops of the white, and then we're going to have about a nickel size heaping dollop of the cadmium yellow, and then a pea size amount of our primary yellow. And again, it's mostly white here in the background, and I kind of touch into a little bit of that cadmium, but I'm gonna start to just crisscross this back and forth here. Just a light golden background. And thanks for the love. <laughs> Lots of love. Love y'all too. Pray that your day is relaxing and enjoy, uh, that you enjoy your day and that it's completely stress-free. No, this is a no stress zone. Want to make sure that you are very relaxed. So little crisscross strokes here on this. And then I want to be very intentional about turning my brush handle a little bit more to the side. So I hold the brush parallel to the canvas and then I start to stroke some of that cadmium in there. And then that allows that to really kind of peek through and that just really kind of shows through there because when I do hold my brush handle more over to the side, it gives me more of a light, gentle hand and again allows that little color just to stay peeking through there as a highlight. So I'll start with a lot of white, really saturate that canvas with lots of white to begin with. And then I'll just kind of barely touch into my cadmium and I'll push that through in little crisscross strokes. And the key here to allow more of that yellow to just stay peeking through and not completely blended. Here's the trick. You don't want to actually blend it all in because you still want to be able to see the differences between the white still staying in touch here and then also our cadmium yellow peeking through. So light, gentle hand and hold that brush more over to the side. And look, I'm going right over the top of that surface area. But as I mentioned, I keep my hand really light light touch of paint. That basically just helps me not have to do a lot of cut-in work at this point. And then my line work stays intact. So I get a nice fluid look. Now here's another little trick that you can do. I'm a little pressed for time when I do these. And so you can't just sit around and watch me watch the paint dry. So what, what you can do at home is you can actually paint all of your background first and then let that completely set up and dry and then you can take your traceable over the top of that and then do all your line work on top of your background. And that's probably actually even the most easiest thing to do. Especially when it's the same background over the entire surface area. So again, just little crisscrosses. That crisscross texture really helps the light reflect well when it dries, especially, and gives it a nice look of lots of coverage. Okay, and just keep crisscrossing that back and forth. And then this is really helpful too. See like with our little tassels that hang down you still want some of that background color peeking through there. So that's another reason why that's really helpful to have all of that be able to run through the background and yet still have that line work show through because we're, we're gonna touch that up towards the very end. We'll come back in with more of that black. 
And then I'm not bringing that all the way into the lamp because our lamp will be a different color. So we'll just fill that in a little bit later on. And then, especially with the lettering, really wanna make sure we go ahead and just lightly overlap all of it. We had a studio class a while back and then I watched someone very meticulously cut all in and around <laughs> the words and I thought, oh no, you didn't have to do that. It'll bleed through because we're starting to pass out our permanent markers at all of our studio classes here now too when we do those. So it just really makes it a lot easier. And as long as you don't use them on wet paint, they work great. Wet paint will instantly kill a permanent marker, but if you just use it on dry paint, it's all good. So that's all you have to really think about for that. And then it just works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and do a light little dusting through there. Keep my pressure really light, but I do want the consistency of the look underneath. The other thing I like about this particular kind of painting technique in the background is that it is very therapeutic. So this type of process really helps release, release a lot of tension. Very helpful for that. Before you know it, you're not really thinking about anything. And anymore, that's quite desirable. <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree. Just let all those thoughts just fade away and then just try to think about good thoughts. And what I encourage you to do through this process is think about everything that you're very thankful for and just focus on that. And even if it's just that you're able to paint, <laughs> that's a wonderful thing to be thankful for. I know if you really think about it though, you'll come up with a lot more things to be thankful for. All right, we're gonna keep going. Again, lots of white to begin with. Little crisscross strokes here. Crisscross, crisscross. And remember to keep that hand more over to the side, very helpful with this stroke. And that's parallel to the canvas. And that will help a lot more of that paint really rest on the surface. And I am alternating between the two colors, just white and a lot of cadmium. Every once in a while I'll touch into a little bit of yellow. Mostly white. And then little tiny touches of cadmium. See how tiny that is. We're getting there. And then the canvas that comes with your kit actually has some depth to it, about a one inch depth and so you can paint around the edges as well make sure you get all those sides done and then if you're gonna frame it the main thing you just have to watch out for is that you get just enough to overlap the edge all right we are looking pretty good here I do want to make sure I've got bold white accents kind of balanced all over so I'll pull some more up into the corners and then a few more here and then here. All right, wonderful. Okay, so we're getting there. 
I'm going to go ahead and take my mama brush, rinse it off here, and then we're going to paint into the lampshade. All right, and then I'm going to dry this off. You've got paper towels that come with your kit, but you can also just grab a rag too if you like that. Aw, thanks for the love. All right, so we need a darker shade here. We also need to mix up some brown. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that too. All right, so brown, let's do this. All right, we have cadmium orange. Cadmium orange. And then a little bit of black. I have black on a plate, but we have, um, let's get a visual on this, Mars black. So I'm going to take my brush and just barely dip into some black. See how small that is? So tiny. Let's just have a gander at that. Okay, that brings us a very light brown. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Just be, the message here is be cautious with the, brown, uh, the black because it's very overpowering. See, I just touched a little heavier, but not even really picked it up, just touched a little heavier, and you can see how it just really pulled that brown, dark brown instantly. So we just want a light brown here. And again, that base was orange. And then we just touch into some black. All right, so we have that to work into for our background. And then we have mostly our cadmium yellow that's still on our plate. Let's grab a little bit more of that though. So again, cadmium yellow. By the way, my paint, you'll have a nice full tube. I've been using mine a lot, so mine are almost. That's the other good thing. Uh, you can, I've been working with this one paint kit now for about three different paintings so far. So, very long lasting. Okay, so I've got my cadmium yellow here. And then let's grab a little bit of that brown up there too. So we wanna darken this up just a little bit. So it's mostly cadmium yellow and then I touched into a little bit of that brown. Mix that in. Creating more of a gold, like a, a mustard color, an ochre color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work into this lamp shade now. And I'm using the line edge of the brush to cut in and just, you wanna make sure that as you load up with paint, just press back and forth but then keep your line edge thin. So that's firm pressure as you load up your brush. And then we'll go ahead and feather this out by using more of the flat side of our brush to work into the center. just back and forth. And then this is more of that tassel that happens. So we won't be going into that. That's going to be a lot of our black line work later on. So we'll end it right about there. And then just lightly kind of feather that out, feather out those brush strokes. Now I want my thin line edge again, but I'm gonna go right into that dark brown that we mixed up. And I'm gonna go ahead and reemphasize that line. And then this line here too. And then we'll have a, we can do a black line too if we want, or you can just kind of keep it soft with the brown. Line 
line edge there. And then let's get a little bit of this brown initially here. And because the other color is still wet, we're still getting a nice soft blend there. All right, looking good. Let's rinse out. All right, so I'm just about out of my brown here. So I'm gonna add a touch more black to this and get more brown to work with. So again, I'm adding black to my orange. Let's just get a bunch here to work with, just in case. Trying to get it past the rest stage to more of a brown stage. All right, so that's looking nice. And then basically what we're looking for now is a little bit of that warm golden lead color that we've got happening up there, but I want to lighten this up just a little bit. Add a little bit of white. So now we're gonna come into our leg color. Let's grab a little bit more of the cadmium and the white. And a little highlight in here. that back calf and get a soft blend and then we're going to be doing that fishnet hosiery here in just a little bit so that's going to really obscure a lot of that leg I'm going to go ahead and put my mama into the water rinse it out and then get into the bottom here with my little bit brush, do a little twist into that last color that we were working with. And I'm having to pull in a little bit more of the white and the cadmium yellow to get a nice soft blend. Beautiful little leg. Okay. I see a little bit of a I'm gonna rinse out again. Doing a little bit of cleanup here. You know what? I had a bunch of black paint in my finger. You know what I always say? <laughs> there are no mistakes, only possibilities. We'll just make a little possibility here. Yeah, I gotta watch that because I forgot I've been painting all morning. All right. Okay, so now we have our beautiful leg done. So pretty. All right, now we're gonna come in, let's see. I wanna stay with all the light colors first. We'll do black at the very end. So now let's mix up a little bit of that holly green for our beautiful little holly leaves here. And in your paint kit, you will find some cadmium green and then also some bright yellow green. So it's about equal parts on that. Just two like dime sized dollops. 
These are really small, so you don't need that much paint. Okay. So let's mix those two together. Kind of twirl the end of the brush there. And then, by the way, I did, I twirled it into a nice fine point that helps me get into those tiny little points there. And then I just follow that little design. And then I'll kind of feather that back in by holding the brush a little bit more over to the side for the center. Pretty little holly leaves. Okay, now we have another set over here. And all the line work, remember, is done with our traceable in the beginning. So this is super easy. Just feather that in. Super cute. And then we have little bits of red to do. And then I have some red from earlier, but I'm gonna show you how to mix this up. So I want my red to be a little bit of like a cooler red. And in your paint kit, you will have some cadmium red, which is a very warm red. And then you will also find some primary magenta, which is, you know, like a very cool, has cool undertones to it. So what I do is I mix the two of those together equal parts and it brings me to this. So this is what cadmium looks like to begin with. And then when I mix the primary magenta with it, it will bring me to more of a cool red like this. So I'm gonna take my little bit brush and I'm gonna go ahead and just spin this around in little tiny circles. Okay. All right, now let's do some light gray, or actually a little bit of light gray and some dark gray, a little bit of both. So I've got a plate that I've been using for earlier. It's just got white, titanium white, and the Mars black on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little touch of black. And I want a darker charcoal gray here, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this for the platform. The first thing I'm gonna do though is line out the line work here on the platform. I'm gonna go quite a bit darker with just the black on that. And then what I'll do is I'll fill in with just that lighter charcoal gray. through here and then if you do it right about at the same time you still have that wet black that you can work into and you get a nice soft blend between that black and your darker gray there so it has a nice transition with the shading and we are almost to the point of just needing black now this is pretty awesome I do need to do my uh, fishnet look, and that is actually, so that will be, so black again, I wanted to make sure that was the very last thing that we did. So let's go ahead and get back to our dark brown. All right, so 
over here. And let's teach that mix one more time. If you don't, um, in our kit, our colors are, we don't actually have a brown. So we do have to mix it. And so it is cadmium orange and some black. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more, a little bit of black here. Let's mix that together. All right, and we just need a real thin amount and we really wanna have a super, super thin line on the end of our little buddy. So there's little buddy, see how thin that is? So you wanna make sure that, apply firm pressure. It's loaded with paint still, but kind of press that out to where it's very thin on the end. And you wanna make sure and keep checking that through this process too, so that it definitely stays very thin because you want your fishnet to be very thin. So I'm just gonna start making really tiny, delicate little lines. And you can see how thin they are, very, very thin. And then I'm gonna start taking this the other direction too, to where you can see, it's just a real, see how fun that starts to look. I'll just do this all the way down. So basically I just take it in one direction first. Just a diagonal stroke to one side. Kind of reload, kind of darken it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it's just a painterly look for the fishnet. All right, so now we're gonna go the other direction. And then we're gonna finish up with a nice outline too, which will really help pull it all together. And then keep coming back in and applying that firm pressure and getting that nice thin line again. And we'll do this all the way down. This is one of those things where I feel like it looks intimidating at first, and then when people see how easy it is, they go, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna darken this up just a little bit, get a nice dark teak brown, thin it back out again, and then I will follow my leg all the way down. And that really helps pull it all together too, this final line. Very nice. And then we're gonna start working on our black and our fringe. I'm gonna take a few of these Kind of just turn the brush over to the side a little bit. Just kind of lightly dry brush on the edge here of the lamp. Okay, a little shadow. Kind of pull it out. But kind of dry brushes out.
All right, now it's time for black. It's very exciting. So we're gonna be mainly just using our little buddy brush and our little bit brush from here going forward. And I need to load up with a little bit more of my Mars black here. So Mars black. So right there, little dollop of that. I'm gonna press back and forth here into the black paint. Check your end, make sure it's very thin. That's important because we're going to do tiny little fringe. And I want my little boundary. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little boundary here. Just kind of wiggle the brush, but take it across. It doesn't need to be a perfect line because again, this is going to be like a fabric fringe here. But we definitely want that boundary in place. And then I'm gonna come here and work into my little outline. Take this all the way across. So now we have an area that we know this is where our little fringe is going to come in. So you just kind of drag light little dashes through here, long dashes for the fringe that hangs off the end of the lamp here. And you definitely want a little bit of peekaboo tap it out at the top because I want a little bit more density up there and then just pull it down. I'm going to overlap all of that. A little tapping up at the top to create a bit more of a dense weave of that connection with the fringe at the end of the lamp and it will thin out Again, keep pressing, nice thin line. Keep checking for that. And just little dashes all the way across. Do a little bit of some texture here at the bottom too. It's a little tap, tap, taps so that it doesn't look like such a perfect straight line. We don't want that because we kind of want it to look like the end of the fringe. And then I'll tap this other direction. And then up here at the top. And I'm going to concentrate a little bit more pressure with more black at the top because I definitely want to be a little bit thicker up at the top here where the fringe starts. Yay! Okay. Now. Let's switch gears to our little bit. Hi, Larry. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're pretty good looking yourself. <laughs> Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, I'm gonna take my little bit brush and do a quick little twist here into the paint. Just rotates it into a nice fine point. And we're gonna paint onto our little shoe here. 
or black pants. And the leg lamp we have here in our store that my husband made, I mentioned this at the beginning, but my husband made it and he's very excited about the fact that it has a Kim Kardashian shoe. He brags about that <laughs> to everyone. It's so funny. He's always like, oh my gosh, babe. I have a Kim Kardashian shoe on here. <laughs> Larry, you're so funny. <laughs> Don't the ladies tell you that you're good looking? <laughs> So here we go with this cute little pump here. If you want to see the Kim Kardashian shoe, you're going to have to come see us in person. We have it in the window. It actually is really a cool treat to come see for Christmas time. And we're having a big event on December 5th. So you need to come see us. All right. So now I need to paint into the lettering. And you can do this part with paint and your little bit brush by just twirling it into the paint like that. Make sure you get that nice fine point. Or there is no shame in using, where is it? The permanent marker that I have in your kit. So a lot of people do that. Ha <laughs> ha. I read that. I never got as far down as her shoe. <laughs> yes. I get that. All right, so we're going to be very careful as we do this. I need to see this movie again. I say, yeah, it's been about a year since it's that time. I was trying to think about what he, the quote exactly. I think it's um, gleaming sex in the window or something like that. It's kind of funny. Quite provocative for a movie from that time. Merry Christmas. What I should have put on here was fa ra 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 That's what I should have done. <laughs> that would have been funnier. I think I've seen some people paint that on. So you just want to, again, be real patient with yourself on this. Remember to keep twirling in, because sometimes this brush can get really filled with paint and it gets kind of fat on the end and it can be a little bit challenging to work with. A little push right there for the dotting of the eye. Twirl back in for this delicate little S. And I'm also using my little pinky to help brace my hand while I do this too. And it's time to twirl again. The brush is getting thick. So again, it does help reload it, but gets it thin again. Wonderful. And then we have still a little bit of detail to do around our little holly leaves. This will really help those kind of pop out to the front.
You can already see how it's really helping them. And we'll do this other side. And then spin it real tight for really thin. Add just a little bit of water here too to thin that paint out. You don't want any excess water though. I don't want a water run. And you can do tiny little outlines around the holly berries here. And then we'll do flash points here in just a minute. All right, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And then we will use the end of the brush here for some white. See that there? And then we'll just press straight forward and that will make tiny little flashlight for our little reflective light on the holly berry. So it adds a nice little detail there. And let's see, I'm trying to look back and see if there's anything I'm missing here. You can do light little sketches of light too, reflective light. So I'm gonna do the brush side again. And with our little bit brush, see we have like a little bit just right there and right here on the heel. And then right here on the platform. Just a little bit can go a long way. Yep, I think, I think we're done. <laughs> okay, all right, you can just sign your masterpiece. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's beautiful. And this comes with one of our little kits that you can buy. We have everything that you need. It's a great gift, great activity during the holidays. So you can order those at tipsyartist.com. And we look forward to painting with you. This video stays up forever, so you can always come back and watch it and fast forward, rewind, whatever you need to do. And uh, I will be seeing you in just a little bit. So I have a lot more paintings to paint today, but I'm gonna come back on and do another live. So I will see you soon. Y'all have a wonderful day.